Good morning, everyone. We're glad you're here with us. Um, we are ready to worship with you this morning, so please stand and join us. Oh! 
For a second take a break i love that landis texts me from the sound booth and was like don't forget you're the service host I'm like she has no faith in me i'm back there hanging out with the cool kids so the cool kids, the cool kids. they're the cool kids in there oh, yeah so we're gonna do announcements today you gonna handle the first one yeah yeah so uh we don't usually do announcements really so this is kind of interesting both of us are up here that may be disastrous one so of us we'll might see. get insulted we'll i don't know what's so gonna happen we folks we have a really special announcement this morning uh it's actually this is student ministry related but even if you are not in well, the student ministry this still affects you so this year if you don't know we are headed to camp Caswell uh, this June. Uh, I heard somebody June. out there going, yeah. We're really, really excited about it. It's uh, Caswell, Camp Caswell is a youth camp. Uh, it is down uh, at Fort Caswell. Fantastic week, uh, spiritual retreat, just a time away. A lot of refocusing, a lot of just hearts and lives are just completely changed. And we've seen not only a lot of people accept Christ at camp, but people are often called into ministry, uh, or the call into ministry starts at camp. So a lot of great things happen at camp. Now, unfortunately for us, this past year has been really difficult when it comes to funding these uh, students into camp. So this is where we're coming from as a church. Now, usually we do dinner theaters, we do all these different things throughout the whole year to just raise money little bit by little bit to send our students to camp. Well, because of COVID-19 and restrictions and all these, these things that we've dealt with, uh, we haven't been able to do as many fundraisers but we actually have come to uh kind of an idea which is not original at all uh, nothing new under um, the sun uh, guys Ecclesiastes actually has something nothing to say new. about nothing new yeah. under the sun so we found this idea and we started praying about it and what we have decided we actually have we're introducing this morning uh, a fundraiser called project 144 now in the foyer there is 144 envelopes and it is they're very colorful they're very you can't colorful miss you can't miss it they might uh, be coordinated from lightest to darkest because we're art a little, teacher we're, art we're teacher. a little extra yes. we're a little so extra in that in the foyer the, uh, each envelope is labeled one and then the next one's two and it goes all the way to 144. now what we are asking if you want to give to this project 144 Please. um and to send our students to camp uh what we ask is choose what the amount that you want to give to send a student to camp. So this five right here is five dollars. So that means that I'm going to take this five dollars. And that's what he had in his wallet. So just don't, don't judge us. Wallet. Don't judge us. Uh, and so now we are giving five dollars to camp, and there will be a, a, a return section back there as well. It'll be in the offering plate. I've talked to yeah. all the ushers and everything that they're going to know that if they come in these brightly colored, organized in the back. Sorry, I'm going to kick on that again. Yeah. Um, in the uh, offering plates at the door, they know that this goes directly to camp. Right. And so, so here's the thing. If we have 100%, uh, and I mean total participation, and we have someone give to every single envelope, we will be pretty much completely funded for all of our students to go to camp. Now, that's a big deal for us, um, and we, we are really, really just praying. But honestly, if you don't want to give to the 144 envelope, there's still a $1, a $2, a $3, a $4, whichever one you want to give, whatever level of giving that you want to participate in, it is an option back there. I mean, if you want to pray, play the prices right and just grab a bunch of them, we're okay with that we too. Can, we can give you a blindfold I mean, and just send you in the right direction. Send you in a direction yeah. and yeah. push you in there. Yeah. We can try. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but also during this season, please be praying for the students that are going to camp because this is going to be the first big trip away like this. Now, we, we did Mission Week last year, which was an awesome time, and we've had some other uh, short trips, but this one's going to be a really big uh, spiritual retreat, and I'm really praying that God is going to move in the lives of teenagers because I'm going to tell you right now, just looking at it, that there is healing that is absolutely needed. There is direction that is absolutely needed for the teenagers and adults in this world. So with that, that is Project 144. Just keep praying for our student ministry uh, and this 
fundraiser. Amy, I believe you have a couple other announcements that I'm going to let you go solo on. He's going to go wire up for NASA back there. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, yeah, I do have a couple more announcements, guys. We have a few things coming up. When I say a few things, I mean a lot. But all of it is going to be on our app and on our website if, if, you, if you miss something. But we do have the baby dedication next week for Mother's Day. Oh, dads, husbands, here is your seven-day warning. Mother's Day is next Sunday. Okay, when you come in here, yes, the kids' ministry is doing something, but don't depend on that totally, okay? So Mother's Day, next week we have a baby dedication. If you have not signed up to do that and you have a little one that you want to participate, please get in touch with the office. We have a car show barbecue fundraiser. All the order is online for if you want to order that. That is on, oh, man, it's not in the notes. What is the date for that? The 22nd of this month. Thank you, Pastor Mike. It is the 22nd of this month. We're going to have tons of stuff going on here. Lots of food, lots of just fun, awesome vroom, vroom cars. I wish Shantae was here because she always makes fun of me because I'm not a car person. But I'm like, vroom, vroom, yay. So and I like the shiny ones. That's all I got. And your car because it's the one from Back to the Future. Sorry, well, that's another thing. All right. So we have that coming up. We got lots to do on that. So please be grabbing your, uh, your app and getting the fundraiser, uh, barbecue sales, everything. And make sure you come out for that. And then the last announcement I'm going to do is for the kids' ministry. We are super excited that today we are starting a new theme in kids' ministry. It is called 5K. It is talking all about how you have to spend your time focusing and training your spiritual self to run the race of life because it takes listening, prayer, devotions. It takes a lot to, to make your spiritual life go, just like a train, you have to train to be in a 5K marathon. With that being said... On June 6th, after church, we, the kids' ministry, is going to host the first ever TFBC 5K. Don't panic, okay? You don't have to run. This is not just for the kids. I would love the church to come out and participate in this. We're going to have a picnic. You are going to bring your family a picnic lunch, and we are going to go picnic outside in the back. We'll have tables and chairs and everything set up, and we're going to have time to fellowship as a church family. After that, we are going to, most of us, are going to walk a 5K. It's not going to be that hard. If you don't want to do it, you can do half of it. If you want to do one lap, I'm going to cheer you on and say good job. We're going to do it all here at the church, just basically around the property. We're going to have it marked off. It's going to be a fun time. I'm asking you to come out and participate and have a good time. Who doesn't like to eat outside? Come on. All my indoor people are like, not me. All right, so with, those, with all that said, I'm going to pray us out and get ready for worship. And we are going to, I'm going to go ahead and drop this off in the offering plate. Please be praying about how much you're willing to donate to the youth on this. But everybody just stand up with me. As we are getting ready to keep worshiping our Lord and Savior. You know, this is a house. This is a building. This is the house of the Lord. But it's not the church. You are the church. When we walk out that door, we're going to keep serving our Lord. We're going to keep worshiping him. Right now, we're just doing it outwardly as a group. So during this time, I was, I'm praying that you just let go. Let go and let God have it. Pray over this time. Sing out. Raise your hands in worship. If you're not a hand raiser, raise your heart in worship. Praise his name. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this day. It is the day that you have made. You've let us all wake up. You've let us all get here. We love you, and we want to make this all about you. Be with Pastor Mike as he brings the message. Let it be from your will into our hearts. Thank you for a praise team up here that every week serves countless hours just so we can stand and love your name in song. We love you, Lord. Let it all be about you. Amen. tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes and still the joy I need when brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken no I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance
Kevin Dupree comes to pray us into our time of uh, service as we hear God's words. Just want us to remember that even in the hard times, God is good. And thank, I thank him for that every single day. God is good. 
Uh, before I pray, I want to just share something that I stumbled across. Our, our message for this year is sent. And uh, this isn't something that's relevant to this time or even the time of Jesus when he said, go and make disciples. This was God's ordained mission throughout history from the beginning of time. David had just uh, committed murder. And Nathan came to him and convicted him. And this is what he said. It's a familiar passage. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. We all know that. But if we continue on, it says, Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will be converted to you. Father God, thank you for your grace, Lord. Father, just... Forgive me for taking it for granted and not being amazed by it more often, Lord. But Father, I hope that each one of us here today are restored this morning by the joy of your salvation and you will sustain in us, uh, Lord, a willingness to serve you. Lord, help us. Here we are. Send us. Use Pastor Mike in a powerful way this morning and help him to encourage our walk with you. In Christ's name, amen. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Our, our, our crowd's a little bit thinner in-house, but uh, I know that we have some folks that uh, uh, are using this opportunity to take a little time away and, and be gone. And, and I hope for those folks, they'll be able to join us online, uh, either live right now uh, in the moment or uh, a little bit later when they come back and uh, and get to watch the service, but uh, we're glad that you are here. So glad. Are you glad to be here? Amen. 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 I am so glad. So glad to be able to be here. You know, um, Kevin Dupree, who just led in our, our prayer time before the message, is one of our leaders in a ministry that's been going on here at Trading Ford Baptist Church for 15 years. And we want to take a, a, a couple of moments today to just celebrate that. It's called Celebrate Recovery, and it's all about helping folks find strength in Jesus Christ and help in Jesus Christ for those struggles with hurts, habits, and hang-ups. And aren't you glad that God cares about our hurts, our habits, and our hang-ups? So, uh, Kevin, uh, like I said, is one of our leaders with CR, and we just want to celebrate today the fact God's faithfulness and that we have been for 15 years blessed with this ministry. Um, and, and if you have in the past or now currently work with, have been a leader, have served in the ministry of Celebrate Recovery, could you just stand for a moment? We just want to say thank you in any level, in any way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Celebrate Recovery. It's a, a wonderful ministry. Um, today, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 40. And while you are uh, turning there, uh, I want to let you know that uh, God changed my message. Uh, there was a, a passage of Scripture, and I'm going to set this little iPad down. I'm afraid that it's got all of our sound mix on it, and I'm afraid that I might get wild with a gesture and just kind of wipe out the whole mix. So I'm going to set this right here so I don't inadvertently uh, swipe it. Uh, but God had, I thought at first, been leading me to another Old Testament passage that I, I won't go into detail, but let me just tell you it's dark. It was, it's, it's, it's a heavy, heavy passage. Now, with that said, it's in the Bible, so, you know, it, it's God's Word. But I was going to head in that direction of a really heavy passage. 
And somewhere, this well, actually, I know exactly when and where. This past week on Tuesday, God changed the direction of uh, the message. I wrestled with that and sought God. Uh, and so the message that I'm going to be bringing to you uh, is, is, I know without a doubt, the message that God put on my heart. I don't know all the hearts that he has it for, but I pray that, that it'll be for you at some level, at some way, at some point, because uh, God had a reason for, uh, for making that change, and maybe it was for you. I don't know. Maybe it was for me. But um, the message today, again, as Kevin said, our, our theme for the year that God's given us is, is sent, S-E-N-T, that, that we are all sent. And today, um, the episode of the Sent series is sent with a message of hope. Now, as you found your place in Isaiah 40, there's, there's something that I want to point you to. The Lord is our hope. He absolutely is, and we need to acknowledge that. And this coming Thursday is a special day as well. Uh, it's a day of prayer. Now, with that said, every day ought to be a day of prayer for uh, a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen? I mean, it, it, that was a weak amen, y'all. <laughs> it was there, but it's kind of, yeah. Every day ought to be a day when we have the privilege to talk to the God of the universe. That is awesome, isn't it? Yeah, it was wonderful. We, wasn't yesterday a beautiful day? It was awesome. It was a beautiful day. And we get to talk with the God who created it, just like today is a beautiful day. The creator of all, we get to talk to him, and he, he pays attention. But this coming Thursday is going to be a special day of prayer. Special day of prayer. One that's set aside by our nation to say, Lord, we need you and we need to call on you. It's the national day of prayer. What I want to challenge you to do is pray for our nation, for our leaders, for the direction that our country has taken and the, and the changes that need to be made. Pray for our nation this coming Thursday, and especially at noon, 12 o'clock noon. There's going to be several different opportunities. The, the Pray Rowan group is going to be praying, I think, downtown, and God bless those folks, I've been a part of that before, but also this coming Thursday, I've been asked to be a part of the um, prayer service. The prayer service is going to be at 12 noon at Stallings Memorial Baptist Church in, in downtown Salisbury where um, uh, we're going to have just a short time, just 30, 35 minutes of, of just worshiping the Lord some and to... Uh, to be able to have time to call on his name. And that's the one that's sponsored by the Rowan uh, Baptist Association. I pray that, that God will meet with us in a, a powerful way. But I ask for your prayer support because uh, for the first time uh, since our son Ben's memorial service back in November of last year, I'm going to be standing up with an instrument trying to sing and play uh, for the first time since November. And so I, I pray that'll go well. Not, it's not about me, but that God will work through me, speak through me, sing through me, play through me uh, as I have a part in leading that service. So uh, if you're able to be out 12 o'clock noon this coming Thursday, I'd love to have you join us. Sent with a message of hope, Isaiah 40. The Bible text that I'm going to be reading in just a, um, a couple of minutes uh, is a text that was sent to uh, a people who were facing the certain judgment of God. Okay, no beating around the bush, no trying to just kind of, uh, you know, sugarcoat it or, or make it a softer message. The Bible text is being sent to a message uh, to, to a people receiving the message that they are going to be 
judged by God. Um, in the previous chapter, the one that we're going to be reading from in a moment, uh, the same prophet Isaiah in chapter 39 had the difficult job of telling King Hezekiah, uh, the king of uh, Judah, uh, God's people, that the Jews were going to be carried away into Babylon. And it wasn't because God had lost his power to protect them, but it was because they had forsaken and turned away from the Lord their God. And, and even chapters before that, back in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, we read, God had told me to say to this people, this people approaches me with their words and honors me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Where's your heart this morning? Yes, God's people had turned from him. And their sins put them under God's condemnation. But just as the bad news was given in chapter 39, you know, if... if I were kind of uh, going on my expectations. I would think chapter 40 was after, you know, kind of the bad news is unveiled. You're going to be sent into captivity in, in Babylon. By the way, you, you think that's just some dusty old history. Put it in our own days and say, what if the United States had been given the message, okay, all you Americans, you are going to be carried away into captivity into Canada, whichever direction north is from here. <coughs> now, Canada's kind of a peaceful neighbor, and we don't <coughs> think of them as being an enemy, but what if God just chose us to go into captivity as he did the people of Judah? It would be devastating. So they just got some bad news in chapter 39, and I would expect chapter 40 to be really lowering the boom, really dropping the hammer. More words of condemnation. More words of judgment. But that's not what we read. To my own personal amazement, as we begin chapter 40, here are the words I find Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her warfare has ended, that her guilt has been removed, that she has received of the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. And I believe prophetically God is looking ahead toward that time where the Babylonian captivity will have ended and, and his people will be at a better place and the warfare will be over. The voice of one calling out, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. And even the uneven ground become a plain. And the rugged terrain a broad valley. If those words sound familiar, maybe it's because it's the message God gave John the Baptist to preach. To prepare the way of the coming of Jesus the Messiah. It was prophetic, recorded in Isaiah 40. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord is spoken. A voice says, call out. Then he answered, what shall I call out? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flowers fade, and the breath of the Lord blows upon it. You know, it's an amazing thing here. The beginning of May, and to see everything in bloom. And it's beautiful, and I love it. But I've lived 60 years, 
and I know what's going to happen to those flowers that are blooming. Their beauty is grand, but it will fade. And the grass fades. Well, if it rains, you'll have to mow it. And I had, you know, well, anyway, yeah. But when frost comes again, we know what will happen. But here's what Isaiah is saying. Not only is that true in nature, but people are indeed grass. And the grass withers and the flower fades. But here's what lasts forever. The Word of God stands forever. His promises. What we just read instead of more harsh words of judgment, which would have certainly been deserved. God chose at that particular moment to give Isaiah a different message. Comfort Isaiah. Comfort my people. They need to know. They need to know that I love them even when I judge them. If you're a parent, can you recall having to punish your child? They may have deserved it, and they need it, and, and children need to be corrected. They do, but lovingly, parents don't ever correct your children in anger. That's a bad plan. Get a hold of your anger before you deal with those discipline issues. But when you correct your children, you're showing them love, and even with God, when He when he has to, in our sinfulness, correct us and punish us like a parent would a child, Isaiah. Even in the time that I am having to offer correction, I want my people to know they are loved. I have not given up on them, even when they make stupid, sinful choices. Have you ever made a stupid, sinful choice? I have. If you'll be honest, you have too. And God is saying through Isaiah, tell them words of comfort, words of hope, and that I have not given up on them. Isaiah, comfort Comfort my people. They are stubborn, but they're my people. They are rebellious, but they are my people. Comfort them. Isaiah was called to speak for God, and so are we. And as we've said, our focus in 2021 is the fact that we are sent. We're not just to stay within the confines of a religious building that we would call the church, as it was said earlier, and it's so true. We're the church, not this building. We are the church, and we're called to go out and to be the church in the world, and we're sent. But what's our message? That God hates sin? Well, yes, He does, and and certainly we believe that, and there's a time that we need to speak that. But could it be that we also need to be saying to a world that is so hopeless, devoid of hope, that we have a message and a source of real hope? I believe that that's what God's put on my heart today to share with you that we, as we try to share, as we try to tell our story like Dennis Nunn tried to teach us to do, or, or use a track or don't use a track, whether that's a tool you're comfortable with, you know what? It's not about tracks. It's about the gospel. And it's about being able to share with other people what Jesus Christ has done for us. And in so doing, the fact that we are sent we are carrying a message of hope. And that fact that we are sent with a message of hope is so important because, first of all, the world is so corrupt. 
That's the word I chose, corrupt. What would you call it? Fallen? Yeah, that fits. Broken? Messed up? And all our... All that we have to do is open our eyes and look around to to see that. I I think it would be hard to deny that the world is so corrupt. Here's what I see when I look around. I see hate and violence. I see it on the left and I see it on the right. I see it from non-Christians and I see it from Christians. In a world filled with hate and violence, we need to remember the words that God gave the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. By by the way, let me just pause here in the middle of this text. You know, I am a conservative, I am a Christian conservative and don't apologize for that but in showing the love of Jesus we don't need to ask someone do you share my views before we can just legitimately reach out and show the love of Jesus Christ we need to share the love of Jesus Christ with everyone we come in contact with whether they share our views or not if your enemy is hungry feed him if he is thirsty give him a drink And listen to this, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That is so powerful. God told Isaiah, preach a message of hope, comfort, comfort my people. They're getting ready to go into exile. They have sinned and rebelled against me, but in spite of that, I love them. And I want you to speak words of comfort to them. The world is so corrupt. That's the reason we need to carry that message of hope. And secondly, we need to carry a message of hope because man's solutions are so inadequate. (laughs) Human solutions are inadequate. And I'm not saying, you know, we shouldn't try to do something to to fix the problem and sometimes you know policies need to be changed and and legislation needs to be wisely written all these things have their place but at the end of the day man's solutions are so inadequate i was talking about the world being corrupt fact is it's downright trashy in a lot of different ways in a lot of different ways but let me speak literally Tuesday, I pulled into the parking lot here at church and found that someone had left us a gift. It appears that someone had gone and placed a big order at cookout. And all the wrappers and all the cups and everything from that trip to cookout, for some odd unknown reason, was left in our parking lot. And I saw this bag laying there, so before I go into my office, I just pull over, I pick up the bag. I see what it is. I put it in the back of my truck, and later that day, go put it in the dumpster because that's where trash belongs. oh, Oh, by the way, parents want their children to know that there is a place for trash. You don't just, you don't just crush a, an aluminum can and throw it down. You don't just wad up your wrapper from your Big Mac and throw it down. There's, there's, there's a place for trash, but I don't know if you've noticed it lately, but the world's pretty trashy. And the same day that I picked up a bag of trash from our parking lot, later that day, I was on Jake Alexander, right about the place where it crosses under Highway 29. And I literally, I I couldn't believe this. I think it was a God thing. God was just opening my eyes. I saw a big bag of trash laying on the side of the road. And I saw a sign that someone had handmade and put there. And it was an ugly face. And the word under the face said, seriously? 
like hoping that the person that put the trash there would see it and, and say, what in the world are you thinking? Fast forward a little more. Same day. I am on Highway 152 heading down to pick up my grandkids off the school bus and I see another bag of trash on the road where someone else had written a sign, but I can't read you that one. Now, here's the problem. I, I, I don't know who left the garbage and I don't know who put up the signs but in the world that we live in, man's solutions are so inadequate and putting up a sign is not solving the problem because chances are the person that threw out the garbage don't care about your sign. Doesn't affect them. You know, I get it. The person that put up the sign was basically saying, this makes me so mad. Don't they understand? This is April and April is Earth Month. People shouldn't be putting out garbage like that. You know, I, we should be stewards of, of creation, absolutely. And we don't need to just throw garbage on the side of the road. As a matter of fact, it made me a little aggravated when I was having to pick up that bag of cookout garbage. I was kind of thinking to myself, if I could just get a hold of the person that had put this garbage here, we'd have a long talk. But about the signs, did the signs change anything? N not really. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't just put up a billboard when he came to earth. He could have put up a billboard. He could have. He would have had every right to have put up a big billboard on the side of I-85. Mike Motley, you're such a sinner. Mike Motley, you're such a loser. And Mike Motley, do you notice your hairline's receding even more? And I'm in control of that. He could have put up a billboard that said all of that and more. But when Jesus came to this earth, he didn't put up a billboard. He was nailed to a cross. And instead of a billboard, he chose to say, in spite of your sin, I love you this much We're sent with a message of hope because the world's so corrupt. We're sent with a message of hope because man's solutions are so inadequate. And we're sent with a message of hope because human hearts are so broken. You know, in this building today, we have people are different in so many ways. Age difference, young, old. There's male and there's female. There's some folks with more and some folks with less. There's some folks whose skin color is lighter and some folks whose skin color is darker. And you know what? None of those things are what matters but I can tell you one thing that everybody in this place has in common today. And that is we are all broken people. Now, redemption may have began its work in us and God's putting together the broken pieces of our life and making something beautiful. And that's often the case when we turn to Christ. It's always the case. But... Even with God's work in our life, there's still brokenness. You know what's brought that to my attention recently? When I drive up and down the, the highways or the back roads, 
I began to notice the places where flowers and crosses are on the side of a road. And I, as I've shared before, I know what that means. And it reminds me that there's brokenness there. There's hurt. There's pain. And I've started a habit of just, even though I don't know the, the people who put the flowers there, I know it means they lost a loved one there on the side of the road. And I pray for them. And I pray for a spouse if they had one. Or children if they had kids. Or parents that were grieving. Friends that were left behind. And I pray that God will send someone to show them comfort and hope. God said to Isaiah... Comfort my people. And folks, the greatest message of comfort is found in the cross of Jesus Christ and his empty tomb. And it is what gives us hope. As we draw the message to a close, yesterday I had the privilege of being at the Capstone Banquet. And it was uh, a blessing. It was an encouragement. And I was blessed to hear the songs that were sung and the testimonies that were shared. And at one particular point in that banquet, a song was sung. I loved the song from the first time I heard it. The very first time I heard it, as they get ready to share it with you, long before I heard it yesterday at that banquet, I remember hearing it on the radio and how it blessed my heart to know that in the darkest night and in the most difficult valley, when we think God is nowhere around, in reality, He's right there. When I first heard that song, I thought, wow, that's Dolly Parton singing the harmony on that. How about that? And uh, that the truth of the song spoke comfort to my heart. As we head into a time of response and invitation, I'd invite you to stand, but listen, not only with your ears, but with your heart. As John and Ashley sing this song, that they sang at the banquet yesterday. There was Jesus. Every time I try to make it on my Every time I try to stand, start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on yeah, There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now. And there was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment. Forgiveness and a price I couldn't pay. I'm not perfect, so I thank God every 
sang that song yesterday, the Lord just nudged my heart to say, you know, it, it wasn't on the set list for today. Greg can attest to that. Landis and all the other band members, we didn't have that on the list, but I asked if it could be done today because I wanted it to be a blessing to you. Uh, was it? And I, I pray. And to the folks at, at home watching on the internet, YouTube, Facebook. I pray it was a blessing to you too. And as we get ready to close in prayer today, I've called on my dear sister, Shirley Luckadoo, Dr. Shirley Luckadoo, uh, to come and to lead us. And as I said, we're celebrating 15 years of ministry through the program called Celebrate Recovery. And uh, it's not about me and it's not about Shirley, but it's all about Jesus and the healing that he can bring. And I'm so thankful that through this, God's used it as a tool. And Shirley, any words you'd like to share and then your closing prayer for us. I appreciate you, my sister and partner in ministry. Oh, and I appreciate you so much, Pastor Mike. And this church. You know, there's a, there is a, an account in the scriptures of a paralyzed man with four friends. Those four friends wanted him to get to Jesus so badly that they picked him up, hauled him to the roof, cut a hole in that roof, and lowered him to Jesus. That's what you do. That's what Celebrate Recovery does. Every week, it's not about me. It's not about Pastor Mike, although without him, that ministry would not exist. But it is about Jesus Christ bending down and encouraging this ministry to be here. It's about him. It's about him, and as long as he is the center. If you look out there at that uh, sign that says Celebrate Recovery, there are rocks around the base of it. The very first year we had this ministry, the people who were part of Celebrate Recovery picked up rocks and carried them out there to acknowledge an altar as in the scriptures. 
Tuesday night, we're going to have a big party. I hope you will come. We invite the whole church to come. We're going to have Lexington barbecue, and we're going to have special music, and we're going to have Reverend Kyle DeLong come and share his testimony. He was an early participant in the ministry. Please come. We'd just love to have you. We'd just love to have you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you are God and we're not. Because as Pastor Mike has spoken, we have been so broken. Every person in this room, some of us more so than others. But Lord, we are a broken people living in a broken world where we make serious mistakes. Even as Christians, we live carnal lifestyles. We beg forgiveness for that. We thank you that you do, even in discipline, come down and comfort us. Providing a way out. There's always a way out, Lord, because you provide it. We don't have to go down the wrong path. I pray if there's someone here who does not know you today, that they will make that decision before they leave this place. I pray if there's someone here who needs the support system that Celebrate Recovery offers, that they will come and join us and, and be a part of that ministry. I praise your name and thank you for all of the people who have served in leadership in Celebrate Recovery. Without them, it would not exist. I thank you for this church that loves on people and forgives people and includes people, even when perhaps those people certainly don't deserve it, but neither do any of us. Lord, I pray that you'll be with us as we go our separate ways, Lord. Pour out blessing. Help us to be your witnesses in this community. For it's in your son's precious name we pray.